today we're turning toilet paper like this into a stunning supply like this. We're making gilded toilet paper and I'll show you exactly how. So I've been using it to decorate all sorts of junk journal ephemera. So I have envelopes and tags and I've used them in different ways. So I made gold gilded toilet paper and added a little strip here and it contrasts so beautifully with this deep rich red flower. On the one below here I just used an image from a book and I think that goes so well with a lime green gilded paper just at the back. I've added it to some tags, so just simple tags. On this one I added a gold strip down the left hand side and isn't that gorgeous with this yellow bird. I used a tiny off cut here and sewed it on to offset the black and where I've got a bird with some colour like this teal one I chose teal paint to add and it just looks absolutely stunning. I've got some great tips to share with you today for making this really easy and also some lessons that I've learned when I've been having a practice making all of these. I have the process steps as usual and these are in Pinterest. Let's get on and transform our beautiful toilet paper. I've got a few supplies laid out on my desk and I thought it would be helpful if I just shared a little bit of what I have laid out because there are a few little bits and bobs that we're using today and a tool that I haven't used for some time. So I have some paint in a little basket there and the key element that I'm using today are these metallic gouache tubes of paint from Arteza. But you can use other type of paint, other types of paint. And of course I'm going to mix them in my little palette here. I've got a selection of water brush pens and I've used one of those. It's got a really fine nib and it picks up the paint beautifully. There it is actually. So I'll tell you more about that as well. There's the toilet roll. I've got some little elements for putting on the envelopes and I did think about putting them on my money pouches which I made a couple of weeks ago. The key tool that I'm using today, I haven't made much use of this, is an embossing tool and I'm going to put the toilet paper through a folder through the tool. This is the one. It's a Sizzix embossing folder. I only have a couple but I want to make more use of them and the effect is absolutely stunning. So I'll show you exactly how I line it all up and how many pieces I use. So we'll do one of those in a minute. I've got a book there to raid for flowers for decoration for my envelopes, some alternative decorative elements and behind you can see some metallic paints there in little pans and the box of Arteza metallic gouache paints. And I'll tell you why I think one of those is better than the other, which I learned as I was practicing painting on my toilet paper. I can't say I say that very often. And then using it to decorate some items like these. So the first thing we're going to do is tear off a few sheets from our roll. And there's nothing special about this roll of toilet paper. I want four sheets, one, two, three, four. If it helps, I could probably tell you, just tear that off carefully, that it's not just a single sheet. I think there's a couple of plies on this. And what we want to do is fold it neatly along the perforation so that we get four even pieces. They will be back to back as it were. And that means it has an effect when we come to do the painting on it but we can cope with that. I will work through it with you. So I've got four pieces now and they're just neatly folded and that's quite important. So what we want to do is put them inside your chosen embossing folder and make sure that it is nice and neat within the folder so you haven't got like a piece coming out of the side. Put that down, that looks quite neat doesn't it? And bring in this heavy guy. And I've got a couple of plates here and I'm going to put this through, roll it through. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You know, it's not really heavy. It's not really hard to wheel through. Which way does it go? Let's get it going. Just get that through there. So as I said, I've got four sheets and each of those sheets are two ply. And I can see already 
that the embossing has worked really well. So I'll just bring that back to finish it off. Pull out my plate, pull out my tissue paper and what have we got? That's really crisp isn't it? Carefully take your paper out of the little embossing folder. It's all squished down at this stage but it does look it does look beautiful. We don't need that for the time being. And very gently unfold it. So if you've got two or three ply, be careful that you're not actually pulling one ply away from the other. We just want to fold it back out as it began. And then what we're going to do is paint those raised elements. So let's pick a raised side. So two of these sides are raised on this side and two of them, and I know it's hard to see, are raised on this side because of the concertina fold that we did. So I will pick one of these raised sides and get some paint on it. And I have got a few tips for painting as I mentioned. So let me choose a paint brush. I'm going to start with one that is it does have quite a fine nib. I'm not actually using the water in it. I like to have a little container of water here. And my preference, having played around a bit, let's just turn that that way, is to use tubes of paint over a pan in a palette like that. And the reason is that I can get the consistency of the paint to be what I want it to be, and then dab away in paint more quickly and easily than if I keep having to go back into a pan and remixing to get the desired consistency. What's actually happening when we paint these pieces of toilet tissue? If we get the consistency right, which is about like that, a slightly liquid gouache this is, you could use watercolour paint, metallic, you want a metallic element to it. We're going to pick a bit up and the paint will leave the mica sitting on the top of the raised element that we've embossed. So let the paint do its work. You'll learn exactly how thick you want the paint to be. And you do have to go back in and reload your brush quite frequently. But basically what we're doing is we're using just the tip of the paintbrush to deposit some of that beautiful liquid gold onto the embossed raised surface and the water that's on the brush and mixed in with the paint just dissipates into the rest of the toilet tissue and leaves that gold resting on the top. And what that means is the water that just drifts away will dry and you are left with an absolutely stunning result that's like molten metal on the top of your embossed element. And although it takes a little bit of time, just to go over any of your patterns, and any patterns will do, I think it's really worth it. You get this absolutely stunning effect and you can of course do it in any colour. I've decided, having played around with quite a few, and I had a go at some greens, I think the greens work beautifully, especially that teal that I used a, a little strip of on the tag. That was a bit different, but I seem to gravitate back to the gold, and maybe the colour that works best depends on the pattern that you've got. So give yourself a few minutes just to do the painting. Maybe do three or four sheets at once because you will use them very quickly when you come to decorate your elements. Here's just a couple of little pieces where I've had a go with different colours. There's the teal down the left hand side and I played with a deep copper and that I think is a chartreuse, the yellowy green on the right. I think it looks particularly good when you have a whole sheet. Imagine that maybe on a pocket. It would just really shout opulence, wouldn't it? And this is a larger amount that I've done. So I took the time to just cover a whole piece in that limey, greeny yellow. And I did keep going back to those beautiful golds. So look at these, these are all ready to play with and decorate. And when they're dry, they have a more robust feel. 
so it's a little bit of crispness on the surface. I did have a play originally with kitchen roll, so you may be thinking that that's an alternative, and I think it probably is. The kitchen roll that I used, I put through the embossing folder just a single sheet, and I didn't really get the crispness of embossed image, so that was probably the reason I wasn't too keen on it. But also it started with a few more perforations in, so I prefer the toilet paper because you can start with something that's a blank canvas and I think that means it's really, really beautiful when you come to look at the finished item. I mean, just look at the, just look at the molten metal effect on that. So to use little pieces of this gilded paper in any of the colours, I think one of the principles or the lessons that I've learned is really less is more. So just a small amount is needed, which is great to offset and really make pop any of your images. So these come from, I think it's called Washed Stone, a Tracy Fox Digital, but you could equally use black and white images like I have here from a book. And I've got a little bit of packing paper on the left. So these envelopes are asymmetric envelopes. You can see the text is on the slant. And I think that complements really well when we have a diagonal piece here. These are things I made a few weeks ago, so I will leave a link in the video description box and you'll be able to find that tutorial on my channel too. And I also found that just ripping the edges roughly, so maybe not cutting it, that seems to work well and give an interesting edge. I mean, look at the little shimmer on that. And it works so well with the, the bird that's got a bit of teal in it. You can use tiny little scraps and just maybe sew across them as I have here on a tag. So just the tiniest little piece to complement an image. And of course, go big, go grand, go with style and add a really big flash on the left there as I have with this beautiful yellow bird. And then I had a scrappy bit left over so I just put it underneath here, down at the bottom with this bird sitting on it. These are just basic tags that have printed and cut out. So let's just put a couple of the pieces or maybe one piece and an image on the front of one of these envelopes. So I can give you the tips for how to actually adhere the paper as well as now having been able to decorate it. So tip number one, tear off whatever colour you want. And here I've got that strip of three different colours. So maybe I'll look first at the element that I'm going to use. I did tear out one from a book just to show that that's possible too. That would work really nicely with the green but I'm just going to use this one because I feel like it. I wonder if that would go nicely with the copper in the middle. So I'm going to, I did cut to begin with with a pair of scissors and then when I'd actually glued the paper onto my envelope I realised that I didn't really like the straight edge, so I started trying to cover that up with a label. So I've decided, actually, that would look beautiful, wouldn't it? Even that, contrasting colours. Let's go for the copper. So I've decided that ripping is the way to go. And just take your time, tear down, tear, tear around your pattern. There we go. And a strip like that is all we need. Now, my next tip is... Put the glue on the envelope. Don't try to glue your very flimsy paper. So I'm going to get some glue on here. In fact, I'm going to glue all of that bottom left hand corner because I'm going to glue other things on. I'm going to take my little strip and put that on there and I'll go as far as my corner here and here allows. And before I glue down properly, I'm just going to put a little bit of contrasting packing paper underneath there. So I'd already put glue on the envelope. This has got a little bit of acrylic paint and mica on, so I think that goes really, really well. And then all I'm going to do is add a beautiful image. If I can work out which way up that goes, I guess something like that. I want, yes, how does that feel? That looks good, doesn't it? So I will put the glue on this and all the way to the edges. So that can go on there. And my trick at this stage is to try to overlap the image with the strip of gilded paper, but not cover up too much, because I want to see as much of that as possible. 
and I think adding a little bit of text somewhere always helps. So a bit of glue behind that, see how quick it is just to bring it together. Maybe have that underneath there. I'll take my scissors and just trim around it. And if you have enjoyed this, then do check out my video, Easy Embellishments Using Cheap and Free Supplies, because I think you'd enjoy that one too. I hope to see you soon.